and welcome to Journeys and Journals. Our journey is, of course, back to Europe, because my guest today was there when. The victory. You went to Europe as a young man, because that's, we're talking 1940s, right? You are Fred. Yes, sir. Fred D. Fred Fields. Yes, sir. Freddie. Yes, sir. I like that name. Yeah. Now, Freddie, you were in, this is your story. Mm -hmm. This is all about Europe no. and how you got there. Mm -hmm. You brought along your young son today. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Benjamin Fields. Uh, we welcome you back. To, mm -hmm. uh, thanks for bringing your dad, letting us share his stories about something we know very little about. Because you were just on your way to England in the Queen Mary. That sounds pretty posh. It wasn't. Yes. No, no, I wasn't just on my way to Queen Mary. <laughs> on my way to, we were engaged in a war. Okay. We're talking 19. In fact, we didn't know where we were going. We were going to Europe on the Queen Mary. When we landed in in in, uh, in England, we didn't even know where we were. There were no signs anywhere in that whole continent, as far as, as, far as cities were concerned. And the only way you got a chance to know what city it was when you accidentally met some civilian who would kindly tell you, and most of them wouldn't tell you anything. Because now you're you're you set up a tent city, is that right? When you got there? No, no, no. We were, we landed there in, in uh, uh, Scotland and we were in a building and we were sent out in trucks into other areas and ended up in Plymouth. That's where we finally ended up. But we didn't know where we were going until we got there. And were you in a building in Plymouth or? No, no, we slept in tents. Tent after tent. Now, every day in England, there wasn't war going on at that time, but you'd been... You'd yes, it was. You were being bombed by the buzz bombs or the Hitler was sending over planes that would uh, hit in certain areas like a bomb. It would fly only a certain distance and explode. We had uh, airmen, who, who, which I consider the best in the world. They would go up and meet these bombs and explode them in the air. Hooray. Yes, shoot them until they explode. Now, the years- And the RAF also of England. Yeah, because they were so grateful to have you folk over there. Now, if when you were doing this, your work really had, was training, is that right? No, my work was medical, all medical. But why were you marching and marching? How are you going to get where you're going? How far did you march in it? As far as it took to get each day of where we were going. And, and they, did, didn't, they didn't pamper us at all. No. They no, trained no. you when you weren't? We were trained before. How many miles a day? In Georgia, we would hike seven miles every morning before breakfast. And, the, and, in, and at noon, we would hike 14 miles before lunch. And in the evening, we would hike 21 miles after lunch. So we went to bed at dark, and so we went around 10 o'clock at night and to sleep until the next morning. I bet you'd sleep well. Oh, definitely, you had to. <laughs> but when you were on the ship, mm -hmm. how did they keep you in good shape? You don't have to worry about that. We had ex exercise. They had exercise. And they told Calisthenics and that kind of thing. They told you when to get up, when yes. to eat. Yes, yes, you. When to go to the bathroom even. Yes, yes. Everything was was organized. And you're on a bunk bed. Yeah. At the bottom of the Queen Mary. Well, I don't know where it was the bottom, but it was the last no, it wasn't the bottom because Troops were only a certain area, and then after that they had food and that kind of thing. And the reason why I know that, from time to time we had to go on 
uh, uh, duty in the kitchen and peel potatoes and that kind of stuff. Oh, you did? Yes. But then when you got to Europe, well, this is the Battle of Normandy, but this, this troop convoy, is that yeah, what the they convoy. called it? Yes, yes, convoy. And, and did they transport you this way, yes, standing they, up the whole way? Mm, well, I don't know, because I wouldn't, I didn't have, see, the medics had to be operating at all times. So I didn't get a chance to see all of that when they come into the dispensary for whatever they were coming for necessary. See sicknesses and, 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 uh, and keep in mind now, when we went over, we were being fired at and some of the shells from the Germans hit our ships. We had what they call LSDs, LSTs. These were things that were pulled by other ships. Like one ship would pull two, bo two of these floats, that kind of thing. And you were, uh, you tried to outrun them? No, no, you didn't try to outrun them. You, see, what happened was the, to transport the, the ships over, it was just like you put two trailers behind a car. Okay. Well, that's what they do with a boat. They put one boat with a motor in it and put two flat things behind it with people standing up in it. We were exposed. Wow. This was war. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're the one that can tell me about it <laughs> because you were there and you lived it. Yes, I did, very much so. And, and so when Inel was injured, we had to work with him. Yeah, that's your job with the red hat, red cross on the hat. No, we didn't have red. That's what they have on there. We didn't have that. That was a, the Germans could see that and shoot you 10 miles away. We didn't have nothing like that. You mean being a medic was target practice? Anybody was target Anybody. practice, they could shoot at anything fair love and war, and that was war. Folks, you heard it here on Better Life TV. So you get me upset when you start talking about that because that was a fellow who, an officer who had one and he was going to get all of us killed. I'm not going to get you talking <laughs> about that. But we'll talk about anything else you want to talk no, about, no, you, man. Yeah, so, did, so did the medics have any other marking? Any other markings? Uh, signifying that they were medics? No. No, not when, really. So, when not. somebody we needed to make, they say medics. And so you just run And over. they pass on medics, medics. Uh huh. And then you do what you, you, you fall it right all around. Oh. Because you see, what happened was the Germans had people in our army who had come from the United States with us in the army all the time who were sending signals to them and we didn't even know it. Yeah. We had an officer in our unit who was, who was already a captain. And, and that meant that his next step would be a colonel. And he'd been sending messages the whole time. We were from, from Georgia up until we got to New York. He had infiltrated yes. the American Army. Yes. He was working for the SS, and he was sending them uh, information. messages, information of where their, yeah. uh, their next military moves were yes, and everything. Yes, yes. And they, they, they would get bombed, and they knew that there were leaks going out but they didn't know where they were coming from. And he had gone to some of the best schools in Texas. The Germans prepared for this long before the war started. This information is so valuable. Your dad is full of, full oh, yeah. of history. You but lived you, it. Yes, I did. <laughs> and we want to thank you. Thank you so very much for this wonderful country. It's a blessing to be alive. Yes. Now, y'all had to sermon at all that led to shout and praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, yeah. because. Well, it, it, speaking of that, here's a fun family a picture. Mm -hmm. And you said, this is a church camp. Yeah, that's it, at uh, SoCal camp meeting. Camp meeting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, someplace that I went uh, years and years when we lived in California. And these beautiful people. Yeah, that's the family. You want to tell us about them? These are the twins that were the firstborn? Yeah, the firstborn. They were the firstborns at, at the uh, Stanford Presbyterian Hospital after World War II. And, and Stanford... Uh, See, so Stanford Hospital was turned into by... And uh, Dr. Stanford built a hospital and did this, the uh, 
uh, caused the place to be, become quite popular. And then uh, he turned it over to uh, who, whatever the thought it was, and then named it Presbyterian Hospital. Well, I know that my husband worked next to this mm -hmm. in what was called Stanford Research, and they had built this facility for when the Japanese war, when the war was in Japan, mm -hmm. they'd bring them the yes. injured back there. Yes. Mm -hmm. They didn't have to. Mm -hmm. War was over. Yeah. So we're grateful. Yeah, that's right. They did have a facility like that. This is... That's the family. Mom and Dad and... And Ursula. Yeah, she was the baby of the family, so... In 1991. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I was lucky enough to get a shot of them at with the bears from here uh, yesterday. I've just met these folk. I, well, not the big guy. <laughs> you see, the big guy was my nurse when I was so sick in the yeah, hospital. Uh, I tell you, if you ever wanted to feel a strong arm when you're taking those first steps, this is the guy. <laughs> this is the guy. You're, yes. And you can be duly proud of this young yes, man because he thank followed you. in your footsteps, yes, didn't he? Yes, yes, he did. Yes, you yes, think yes. about... Yeah, they laughed at me when I said I wanted to work, be a nurse. I never shall forget that. The whole company, Augusta, Georgia. Okay. They, uh, <laughs> we were standing in a whole array of, I guess, at least 300 of us. And they said, does anybody here know anything about medicine and how to put a Band-Aid on, uh, on blisters? And I held up my hand and said, I'm a nurse. And they all, a nurse, a nigger nurse? <laughs> oh, they, they just blasted it out. But I, I, I was out of help. You were trained three years in See, I was in school to be a doctor when I was drafted. And that's why I went into the nursing. And and a successful. We've seen about Desmond Doss, who was a medic in World War II, and who also, like yourself, served faithfully. And we thank you so much because mm -hmm. medics were so important. Yes, we were. We were valuable, life savers. Life savers. Life savers. Yes, yes. Yeah. Because some of those fellows would have lived if it hadn't been for us. Yeah. We had. Uh, in fact, we all the medicines we are using now, we tried them out on the medics. Sulfur, all these fancy stuff we got now, it was tried out. It was. Because it had no name to it then. Penicillin, it didn't have no name to it. You just give a shot. Yeah. Until you yeah. didn't report what happened. Now, there's a, a wonderful story that you told me about your dad. <clears throat> he had in World War II, an mm -hmm. officer named George Patton. Right. And he got to... Well, he served under General Patton, uh, not in Patton's platoon, but he was the general in charge of everyone. And um, the, the, his medical unit was assigned to his unit. And uh, General Patton was an unusual fellow. He really valued his men. He always made sure that his men ate at the mess hall before he even sat down to eat. Yes, yes, he, he was would. a man's man. Yeah, he would he, stand and let us march in to eat, and he'd be the last one to eat. When we were being bombed, he would stand and see to it we all got into shelter before he would come in. He was definitely a real protector. And now, this is not only one time, this was weeks. When we, when we crossed the Mine River, he was the first man to go over and come back to be sure it was okay for us to go back. Oh, wow. This yeah. is Germany. This is Germany. Wow. And we crossed the Rhine River under fire. The Germans were shooting at us. So it wasn't a cakewalk for him. No, it wasn't a cakewalk for anybody. Yes. Well, now you got a story about Dad and <laughs> yeah. and uh, yeah. Yeah. and something went on in his ranks. Mm -hmm. Patton didn't stand for it. Oh yeah, this was uh, one of the uh, Southern officers that 
it got out of hand and, and uh, called one of the uh, soldiers a derogatory name and General Patton stood up and chewed this man out. He told him, don't you ever say that word again and these are soldiers, these are my men and you respect that. This must have been quite a time for you, a kid from the South, to no, go... No, no, not from the South, from America. Oh. Because I wasn't fighting for the South. I was fighting for America. Yeah, red, white, and blue. Yes, yes. Um, you see, that's one of the things that's going down through the years. We segregate our, ourselves. Not... That's, what, that's what's happened. We don't now, I grew up in the South, don't, don't get me wrong, I, I'm well aware of what you're thinking and, and how we are. But then when I got over there and began to find out that uh, we had to speak up and had to express ourselves, and since then I've been that kind of person. Not, no, not derogatory, just, ben, just helpful. is that where you got your <laughs> attitude towards life? <laughs> well, let's just say I was trained very well. My dad... He, um, you just uh, be yourself mm -hmm. and be your own person, mm -hmm. and you respect others just yes, as much yes, as you respect yes, yourself. Yes. You show a lot of certain amount of dignity mm -hmm. uh, because what you put out is what you get back. Yes, and that's that's. And all human beings are human beings. Yeah, exactly. Everyone's the same across the board. Yeah, all human beings. Uh, are human I was beings. born and raised in San Francisco, <laughs> and that is a melting pot of all nationalities. So you really can't point the finger at any one particular Everyone nationality is. or race and say they're different, because everyone's the same. Right. Well, there were Russians in Russian River long before there were. <laughs> <laughs> that's very true. Yeah. You that's know, very the, true, the, yes, that, that's right. That's, and that's the Spanish all. were there long yes, before, before that in their yes, missions. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. yes. Um, so it, it's a fascinating thing. And, and even, even in America, all across America, all across America, even the Indians. In our unit, there was an Indian who could trace his family history back to one of the chiefs. And uh, when he was finally discharged with us, he, they sent him to Arizona to be with his family group. One of the, <laughs> yeah. one of the stories, too, is that um, when they were uh, transmitting and talking, uh, they were talking, they had different codes that they were signaling, different messages of military moves and everything, mm -hmm. and they got they were infiltrating them, they were finding out, uh, they were wondering how they would find out their, their messages, how they got infiltrated and how they uh, would find out, how, them, you know. how they would find out where their moves were being made. And so they got two Navajo Indians and they communicated in their language and they couldn't break the code, they couldn't transmit, uh, yes, translate yes, it. Yeah. Code and, talkers. Yes. Yeah. And so they would have, that's one thing that's uh, American history. We made, Navajo we, made Indians, Indian, we made use of everything. We made use of everything. Yeah, they sure did. They made use of yes, yes. all of their uh, resources. There was an Indian in, uh, well, not in our unit, but in the office area. That That's all he did. Was code talking? No, interpret. What we couldn't, what codes would come through, we couldn't interpret. They would use that language and he would interpret for us. That was all he did. Fascinating. Yes, yes. Now, your job was always with the medics. Always with the medics, yes. And so you were helping doctors, you were transporting wounded and... No, not all the time. I was out in the field doing band-aids, splints, uh, carrying wounded patients. I was in combat. I was not in office act all the time. Ah. I was in five battles with Patton. And that meant I was out in the field, not in the office anywhere. At one time, we, when, when, Pat, when, when, the, uh, uh, when the second uh, when the army was surrounded by the Germans, and we, I know for a whole month, Everything we got had to be air 
plane dropped into us. All our food was dropped to us. All our ammunition was dropped to us. The Germans had us surrounded. We couldn't even send a message out. We had to send it up and then and let it pick it up in the air and send it out. Wow. Uh, um, and see what happened was the airplanes would come over and they'd see this little Piper Club and then they'd send the message up for him to receive it. They wouldn't send it up any time. Folks, <laughs> you know, it's only these 95-year-old folks that can tell us these first-person stories. And I surely thank you for coming to Better Life Television yes, and yes, being yes. willing to share this. Yeah, well, it's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah, I've had this opportunity before, and it's, it's just a, a blessing to be alive. To be to alive. Tell it, yes. I know I'm obviously blessed. I know I'm obviously blessed. Repeat it. Mm. Yeah, it's a blessing to be <laughs> to be here. I, yeah. I, my daddy's been through an awful lot and experienced a lot of things. Uh, seeing modern technology just unfold. Well, it's, this it's TV amazing. station. Yeah, that's, <laughs> <laughs> who would have thought? Huh? Who would have thought? This signal will go from here to San Francisco. Yeah, well, okay. And so if you have two sons in the East Coast, they can just go online to mm. betterlifetv.tv. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And there you'll be yeah. in their yeah. living room. Can yes, you believe yes, it? Yes, yes. Yeah, I can believe it. I can believe it. In fact, I've been in some people's living room and watched other people. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who was there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ben, you want to give some accolades to your father. <laughs> well, <laughs> I never thought that I would be in a, in a position helping people. Um, just being in a household with my father, always helping others, ministering to people, uh, giving to others in all manner of aspects of life whether it's an elderly person that needs a ride or someone that um, needs a helping hand or even mm -hmm. uh, $20 to get groceries so they can feed their children. Um, I've grown up uh, in this mm -hmm. man's household and it was uh, <laughs> always with an open heart. And, and that's something that, uh, an experience that you never forget and uh, you always uh, treat everyone with respect and love. Now, this man worked two jobs, I understand, to keep yes, you he guys. Did. He would um, go to work in the morning and wash windows for other people. And it was a word of mouth, I think. And he mm -hmm. was busy every day of the week going to different places washing windows. And it, uh, it paid off. It helped uh, us mm -hmm. keep groceries and feed those all of us growing boys. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also then he worked uh, as a psych tech and a nurse at um, Langley Porter and which later on became UC Med Center. And he worked there for, it was over well, 40? No, 20, 20, two years. No, it was, was it 40 years? I don't know, a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. was. Long it time, was. A long time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Until I retired. And that's, that's a real tough job that you were doing there with. Yeah, that. and it's yes, yes, giving it of heart and spirit. Yes. Totally. Yes. And um, this family, I've been so impressed with the three of them that I've met so far. Um, I just knew that you folks would want to see their story, that you'd want to learn about them. And I, I'm privileged to interview people who have lived history. Mm. Your history is important to us mm. now. Years and years later, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for your privilege. Got, you've got a story or two about this guy you'd like to tell about him? Oh, him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, he, he's been a very active and energetic person. He, uh, the, the thing that uh, always impressed me was when he used to do his cars, he, he would uh, work in our basement, in our home, <laughs> and he'd have all kinds of 
Frig was coming into the room when I'd be trying to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, was, he was very uh, determined and energetic in this activity, and it was quite profitable. Well, I, I've seen a beautiful <laughs> Datsun pickup that was restored to perfection yes. by this guy. Yeah. I hadn't met him, but I sure met his pickup, and yeah. I got to ride in my brother's back of the pickup and wave in the yeah. parade. All right. <laughs> yeah. that beautiful. Uh, yes. We, we're just real privileged. I know that there's other stories that I've heard that I just don't know. Um, I guess it would take a lifetime to tell his stories. Yeah. Um, and the interesting people that he's met, too. Um, there was a time that uh, you met the Hoopers in England, yes. and uh, yes. they were acquainted with the, the King of England. No, they weren't acquainted with the King of England. They were, they were acquainted with the uh, the actually the mayor of the city who was acquainted with the king. <laughs> That's right, yeah. yeah. But you got to see the king? Listen, I got a chance to send her close to the queen as I am to you and speak to her. Oh, yes? Oh, yes. And she welcomed me to the kingdom. <laughs> so I'm special. Are you? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Now, this is the queen mother. Oh. Not the daughter. Okay. Queen mother. Of course. Real people. <laughs> no, no, it was just, it was that her, at, at that time she was in charge. Of it. Yes. Queen mother. And I got a chance to see the grandmother. Oh. Oh, yeah. Well, King that... Edward, I got a chance to see him. You know, he, 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 he advocated the throne. You're right. I got a chance to see him in person. Folks, there's so much more history here. <laughs> if only we yes, could stay yes. all day. I'll, I, I, I was in the right place at the right time. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> at the right time. <laughs>